Everyone, this is Ross. In today's video, we're gonna do a nice little fig tasting for you guys. We're gonna compare a few Breva. One that is a light colored fig and one that is a dark colored fig. So it's gonna be a nice little comparison. They taste very different between the lighter figs and the darker figs. And not just the exterior, it's really all about the interior. So we're gonna really compare a honey fig versus a berry fig. So let's get into that right now. I have a few figs, a few Brabas that I've been meaning to pick. One of them down here is actually White Marseille. And you can see this is an in-ground tree that we planted actually last fall. And we had it in a raised bed. And believe it or not, it survived the winter and it's actually got a Braba on it. So it's very, very strange how this whole thing worked out. But you can see it down here. And of course the Brabas, man, they're always so elongated. They just have this elongated look to them, which is quite different than the main crop. So we're gonna pick this one here. This is our typical honey fig, yellow exterior, amber interior. And let's show you guys a few more Brabus here. The next variety I, I really wanna pick is a Villa de Bordeaux type. It's called Petite Albique. And I have quite a few ripening up right now. And also I have a few ripening up on another similar Vila de Bordeaux type. This one's called Valle Calda, and this one has three Breba on it. But all very similar types to each other. I'm trying to figure out what is indeed the best Vila de Bordeaux type. So far, the Petit Albique, man, it just puts out a high quality fig every year. You can see something was getting at the neck here, but it looks pretty shriveled, it looks really ripe. And this guy over here was actually getting attacked by birds. So I had to come in here with the organza bags. In fact, we talked about in a prior video, setting up our scarecrow Ginzi. You can maybe make him out, yeah, right in there. He looks pretty spooky, huh? But uh, he is now protecting the peaches and I haven't really seen many birds out here today. So excited for that. I also have a few Brabas ripening still. Today is about July 10th and you can see there's some Brabas down there. That's a variety called Raven de Calci. We still have a Neruciola de Elba Breba. Um, but most of the Brebas now are kind of finishing up their course. This is the end of it. And a lot of times I want to mention our Brebas really just don't taste that great. We had some really exceptional Brebas. I'm going to put you guys down right now and set you guys up for the tasting. We had a few Brebas that were really quite exceptional off of my LSU Scott's Black Tree. We had one that was off of my Strawberry Verte that came out really well. But for the most part, it seems like the first few figs of the season, regardless if they're Brebas or main crop, the first few main crop of the year, also usually don't taste that great. And I don't know why that is, but I think the tree needs to get warmed up a bit. I think the first few fruits are kind of a waste. So it is potential that this white Marseille here, because this is the very first fig off of this tree, could really not have the greatest flavor. However, on the Petit Albique, this is not the first fig, and the first fig on certain varieties just are incredible. I don't know, they just have this characteristic to always perform well, always to put out high quality fruit, no matter what time of the year it is. That's Violette de Bordeaux. I mean, it is like, honestly, it is one of the most productive tasty and rain resistant varieties that does well anywhere in the United States, it is an absolute must have and it doesn't get much praise because there's so many other rare figs out there. Violette de Bordeaux is not very rare anymore, but it is inc an incredible fig. And I have about five or six of them because of that. But let's open these guys up now. I wanna just show you the comparison between light and dark Again, they're more elongated figs that you can see down in here. Definitely have this longer neck to them, and that's pretty common amongst most Breba. You can see this is very yellow, almost green in certain areas of the skin. We also get on a lot of yellow honey figs, some sugar spots that are often brown, not the prettiest looking figs, whereas a lot of the the, blacks, the black or purple figs really like to have just that impeccable skin all the time. Um, and I also find that 
For whatever reason, the honey figs don't take the rain nearly as well. The flavor, I think, gets diluted quite a bit. Now I'm gonna cut these guys open for you guys. We'll get a nice little shot of the inside and talk about what that means. Typically, when you have yourself a light colored skin, a light colored skin fig, the interior is going to be light colored as well. Not always the case. And it's the same case with a dark skin colored fig is that the interior will be darker as well. But again, not always the case, but that's pretty much the general rule of thumb, I would say. So let me get you guys a nice little shot of the inside. These are beautiful figs, really nice Brabas. Again, we're in July. This is the right time to be ripening and eating our figs. They look not bad. In fact, you can see a lot of the Brabas have that purplish, reddish tinge to it in the exterior here. On the interior of the skin, which is black, you get this red or purple pigmentation and it almost can look black sometimes. It can almost look jet black or a really dark purple. So that's the differences. And the interior color is going to almost always correspond with a flavor. It's like that with all fruits, guys. Whether it's my raspberries, my purple raspberries versus my yellow raspberries versus my red raspberries, they all have a different flavor versus the tomatoes, which have different flavors as well. My green tomatoes are more acidic. You know, my dark purple tomatoes are more smoky. Um, what else? In terms of figs, your honey figs are going to be the lighter colored figs. These are the figs that have more melon flavors to them, um, that are a bit more sweet, have less complexity to them. They're a bit more figgy. They can potentially be a bit more figgy in terms of having more of that melon flavor, more of a date-like flavor, more of a raisin-like flavor. I, that's how I would consider something figgy is that it's got a lot of melon flavor to it or it has a lot of uh, Fig Newton flavor, which is kind of like that dried fruit flavor, you know, that you'd find in dates or raisins, dried figs. Um, and then the berry figs is what I like to call the red interior figs because they taste like berries. In fact, they taste a lot like berries and sometimes they're very complex, very opposite of a honey fig sometimes. And that a honey fig is just straight melon, just some sweetness, and that's it. Whereas you get a, be a berry fig here and the Violette de Bordeaux style of fig is actually almost a pioneer in a certain flavor group that some people actually consider there to be a whole separate category of berry figs that are labeled the Bordeaux berry figs because they have a really complex and interesting flavor that is similar to a nice wine. And that's what people, that's why they associate these Bordeaux figs with wine because that's a big area uh, for growing wine. So those are the big differences here, I think, is that one is gonna be more sweet, one's gonna be less sweet, one's gonna be more complex, the other one's gonna be less complex. And of course, the flavor is just gonna be totally different. So the reason why I have so many varieties for one is that a lot of them taste quite different, especially what you see here on this plate. Now, if I have a one berry fig matched up to another berry fig, it may not be as significant, but certainly getting yourself a dark fig and a light fig is really gonna get you a wide variety of flavors. I would say through my flavor categories, and this is what I spent a lot of time on, is you can go down in my spreadsheet in the description of any video I've ever put out, you can see my spreadsheet there. There's a link to that, to Google Drive. It'll show you guys the flavor categories that I have set up and the varieties that are underneath those flavor categories. In my opinion, you could probably narrow it down to about three major categories. We have berry, which is what you see here, honey, and then also sugar figs or figgy figs. And those are the, sh the figs that taste a lot more like Fig Newtons, raisins, brown sugar, different types of caramel and different types of sugars. Uh, so 
for the most part, we're covering a pretty wide variety of flavor right here on this plate. So let's get into it right now and I'll describe for you guys exactly what I'm tasting to the best of my ability. So here is, you know what, let's start with uh, White Marseille. By the way, both of these figs you can get very commonly from online nurseries. You don't have to get these trees from me. These are very commonly sold. White Marseille has many names, Laterula, Violette de Bordeaux has many names, Petite uh, Negri, Violette de Bordeaux. It's an extremely, both of them are extremely common figs. So let me, let me try the, uh, the honey fig first and we'll get a nice little comparison. So this is a really refreshing, tasty fig. It's not overly sweet. It's got a nice little texture to it. In fact, the texture is something we don't, we haven't really talked about in this particular video, but that's a huge difference in flavor, in my opinion. And that mouthfeel is quite huge. In fact, the skin is very important as well because the skin has its own flavor. And in a lot of varieties, you can actually separate the skin very easily. If the skin is very thick, as it is on White Marseille, you can very easily peel off the skin and just have yourself the pulp. I mean, that's pretty incredible. I know a lot of you guys don't eat the skin, but it's a shame because the skin has its own different flavor. Sometimes, what I like to say is that the skin is like a nice little cracker for what the interior is of the jam. So you have jam, you gotta put it on something, you gotta spread it out on something. You have yourself a nice little biscuit, a nice little cracker, a nice little cookie or something. The fig skin, the synconium of the fig, is the perfect cracker for the jam. So for me, I don't see a reason to really mess with that, but the fig here was almost a bit spicy. You can almost get a little bit of spices from it, maybe like uh, some you know weird, weird things like cinnamon almost, a little bit of like a persimmon spice to it. Um, but for the most part, it's quite refreshing. It's not too overpowering. This is a fig that I would imagine a lot of women would really enjoy having a lighter, refreshing flavor. Whereas I, I think a lot of men would really prefer a darker, more complex, more intense flavored fig here that are the berry figs. So let me try the, the Petite Albique right now. Hmm. So they're both really good, but very noticeably, the Petite Albique for me has a very, uh, distinct edge. It's just very complex. And it has those figgy flavors to it, especially from the skin. You know, I'm tasting that, especially from the skin, that, that raisin date-like flavor to it with some melon undertones. You've got yourself a berry that, what berry is it exactly that it tastes like? A lot of times I like to say they taste like strawberries or raspberries, but this one, for the most part, doesn't really taste like any other berry. It's its own little unique berry. Maybe there's a berry that exists or a fruit that exists that I haven't tried that this tastes like. But, you know, a fig is a fig. And it really is an interesting flavor, quite complex, it's not just your standard, you know, strawberry, which I would say is a more of a fruity berry flavor. That's a bit less complex, not as that dark berry when you get into things like cherries and blueberries and, you know, honey berries and, you know, some really interesting grapes or some interesting gooseberries or even some currants. You know, these, these are the kind of fruits that I'm thinking of when I talk about a complex, dark berry. Whereas if I'm talking about a light, refreshing, fruity berry, you know, I may, I may say something like, you know, um, you know, your average table grape you get from the store or a strawberry, um, you know, something with less tartness, less complexity to it, you know, less acidity. So for me, that's kind of what this fig is like, is that it's more complex, 
very different flavor than the white Marseille. So hopefully this has shed some light on this topic for you guys, is that which of these do you prefer and which of these do you want to grow? I would certainly suggest, as somebody who's new to growing figs, you know, if you guys are, <coughs> excuse me guys, I would certainly suggest looking at the spreadsheet that I posted down in the uh, description of all of my videos, check out the different flavor groups and try to get a fig from every flavor group. And that way you'll have a good understanding of what figs can taste like. And that way you can decide for yourself which of these are your favorite? And you know, there's quite a few. I think I have about seven or eight different flavor groups. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you really did, that wasn't, that wasn't pleasant. But if you really enjoyed this one, guys, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, also, share this video with someone you know likes to grow figs, someone who's interested in growing figs and uh, it really will help out the channel. All right, guys, take care. We'll see you all for tomorrow's video. Ross out.